In the last couple of months, I've been on a mission to find the best tools for beginners and those on a budget. Previously, I picked out a skill table saw that is a very good saw for the price. I'll link that video in the description as well as at the end of this video. This is my pick for a beginner level planer or those on a budget. If you're interested in checking out this planer, there'll be a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Do I recommend this planer for everyone? Well, stick around and I'll tell you who I recommend it for, and if not this one, which one? I'm gonna go over the features of the planner and then I'll show you what it can do. Let's go. I think most people starting out when they start adding to their tool collection and start upping their game in woodworking, they're gonna buy a miter saw and then they're gonna buy a table saw. Right after that, most people start looking at a planer. A planer can do a couple of things for you. It'll make the wood the same thickness. So if you're building tabletops or cutting boards, all your boards are gonna be the exact same thickness and that's gonna cut down on a ton of sanding. And honestly, None of us like sanding. The other thing it can do is actually take twists out of board with a simple sled, which I'll show you later. Planners are one of the more expensive tools you're gonna to start looking at. Even this model on sale was $299, that's what I paid for it but typically it runs about $100 more. I picked this planer for mainly because of the price and because of the quality and the reviews that I was reading on. I also like the fact that both of these tables fold up out of the way, making it more compact. It also doesn't weigh a whole lot, probably about 50 pounds-ish. This on-off switch can have a lock put through it to lock it out, so if you have little ones and you leave it plugged in, they can't activate it because there's a lock inside those holes there. I don't know if you would ever need this much capacity in a planer, but you can plane up to about six inches thick. That is a lot of beefy wood. Typically, you're not gonna plane anything less than about a quarter inch. The handle up here quickly raises and lowers the height of the planer, and it operates on these two screws on each side, so this always remains perfectly flat as it's raising and lowering, which is what you want because a planer is gonna create a parallel side to the other to the bottom side it's referencing off that bottom side there's also a scale on this side which i never really trust these scales too much i pretty much uh, measure the board that i want as it's being planed so i can ensure that i get the thickness that i want this planer has a capacity of 12 and a half inches most uh planers in this price point are going to be about 12 and a half inches uh, even the 13 inch planer just stepping up a half inch will cost you significantly more 12 and a half inches is plenty for most people it has onboard tool storage so that you're not gonna lose this wrench that you use to access the blades. It has this dust cover on the back that easily comes off with these two thumb screws. Should you get uh, something jammed in there or especially like epoxies and things like that, they have a, a tendency to cause clogs on planers. Even my DW735 gets clogged with it. Speaking of blades, these two thumb screws come right off either side of this and then you can lift this panel up and access the blades right there. As you can see, this is the wrench that will take this piece off so that you can switch, switch these blades out. And they are two-sided blades, so you can just flip that around and you reuse it once one side gets dull. These are very sharp, so be careful. This is a two blade planer, which is a trade off you get when buying this model or this price point of a planer. Uh, usually anything with three blades or more or three blades or the helix head or, or spiral heads will cost significantly more. Not only does the screw raise it up and down, but it has posts on each corner. So four of these that this whole carriage rides on. So everything's gonna stay nice and parallel. When I first get tools like this planer, joint or things like that. I always put down either paste wax or our own Outlaws board butter on this. That'll help everything slide and be slick and smooth so that your boards are just glide across it much easier. And it doesn't take much, just a thin coat. The construction of this planer is pretty solid for the price. It's aluminum and plastic for the most part, but all of the mechanisms, the sides, the bottom, all of that is aluminum. And the only plastic pieces is here around the shroud of the blades as well as the motor. Uh, the the on-off switch is plastic as well, uh, but the overall base, everything about it, it's, it's pretty robust for the price. And honestly, the 735X is a lot of plastic as well as that base, which is some type of cast or aluminum. It is 110 volts, so you can use it on almost any outlet in your garage or workshop in the US. Let's power it up and see what it can do. Now, I haven't powered this on yet, but I expect it to be fairly loud. Uh, just because most planers are, especially when you start putting wood through there. Ready? It's not terrible. That wasn't really terribly loud. When you start putting wood through there, it's gonna get very loud. There are rollers underneath there that are powered that helps pull the wood through. One thing you never wanna do is stick your hand inside there because 
All right, we're gonna plant some spruce, some walnut, and some hard maple just to see how it performs. I've also got an epoxy uh, serving tray that I'll run through here and see how that epoxy buildup, uh, how it handles the epoxy buildup in the back. Typically, you never wanna take off much on each pass. I never, even on the 735X, I never take off more than an eighth, and usually it's less than a sixteenth. I just take in tiny bites off. It, one, it'll make your blades last longer, it'll make your machine uh, run better, and it doesn't just put as much strain on the machine. So that's what we'll do here. We're just gonna take some small bites, just like if I was actually planing the wood. Typically when I'm setting the height for the first pass, I just push the board in there and lower it until it just catches that roller. You'll feel it right in there as it just starts brushing it. Just enough so that it's gonna pull that wood all the way through without you having to do much pushing. You shouldn't have to push the board through the machine should pull it through on its own. A lot of these bench top planers are notorious for snipe. And what snipe is, is when the blade digs in on each end, the in feed and the out feed. The way that you can help prevent that as much as possible, there's a couple of ways. You can send a scrap piece in before it and that should eliminate the one on the front. In other words, it has to be the same thickness and as you just started out, just never plane anything less than 12 inches. Anything less than that can get jammed in there, cause major problems but you'll send that scrap piece in first and then you'll send this piece, your actual piece you're gonna be using behind it, right behind it. You should be able to adjust the machine to eliminate the snipe as much as possible. And this one has those adjustments on there. So I'm hoping that we can do that if it has snipe. These bolts that you see right under the send feed table and out feed table, you can raise and lower. And what that does is it basically raises and lowers those in feed and out feed so that everything stays nice and flat. And that, those are there to help eliminate this, eliminate, eliminate the snipe. Before we start planing, if you're looking for a deal on this planer to get the best bang for the buck, I post daily tool deals on my website, 731mobworks.com slash tools dash deals. You can check that out every day. If there's not a good deal available, I won't waste your time and post anything. I try to find the best deals, post them there for you. You only have two years and they're not gonna last you a lifetime if you don't take care of them. So when you're planing anything with these loud machines, I recommend hearing protection. These are my favorites for using on the planer. These are 3M work tunes. They're Bluetooth, so you can listen to music, audiobooks, podcasts. But even if you're not, and you're just gonna plane something pretty quick, you can just throw these on and they really do isolate the sound and it makes it much more bearable. And they're really comfortable. So the first thing I did was start planing a piece of spruce, AKA pine, it's really soft wood. Uh, I wanted to make sure, because that's gonna tell me if it's gonna snipe or not. And the first time I went through, it did have snipe on it, pretty good bit of snipe. I wasn't too concerned because I knew we could adjust those tables and that's what I just did. You see me here, I'm just tightening or loosening those bolts off to raise that table up. And basically it's kicked up about an eighth inch higher on the backside here than the actual bed is. That basically raises that board up. And as it goes through, the rollers pull it back flat. And that's how I have my DeWalt set up as well and it works extremely well. It took me just a little bit to get it all lined out, but after a few passes, I was able to get that snipe almost gone, and that's pretty much what I expected with this machine. You're gonna have a little bit. It's gonna be extremely difficult to totally eliminate it without building another bed in there or a false bed, but for what we're doing here, I can sand that off and you'll never know it was there. Really, there's only one way to actually get rid of the snipe, and that's to catch it. You gotta go see Mr. Fredrickson, and then he's gonna tell you where to find it, and then you just gotta look around your shop. I'm going, here, snipey, snipey, here, snipey, snipey, here, snipey, snipey, here, snipey, snipey. So once I got the snipe caught and found and figured out, I just started running this through the planer, and I run it through multiple times. I got this down pretty thin. This is probably a quarter inch thin. So I planed off at least a half inch, taking little bites at a time, that's key. You also may see me angle it just a little bit. If the board is narrow enough, I do like to send it through at an angle. That helps with a couple of things, tear out as well as snipe. Once I got it dialed in on the cheap spruce, then I started uh, running this piece of maple through and it did extremely well. The finish on the maple is almost butter smooth. We're talking probably 120 grit, maybe finer. If you sanded it, that's how it would feel. But it does have a tiny bit of tear out. Maple's notorious for that on a planer, even the DW735, pow, tip for you. The way you can fix that is just spray a little bit of water and dampen the grain and then run it through and it shouldn't tear out. Next up was this hunk of walnut. This is eight quarters, two inches thick and it's just a solid piece of walnut that I had. I ran this through several times and it has virtually no snipe. There's a tiny, you can feel a uh, barely, barely a little bump right there on the end and on the in feed and out feed. It's so minor that uh, you could take 120 grit and that would be gone within a couple of seconds. And then finally, I wanted to see how a, an epoxy board would work because epoxy is notorious for clogging up planers and jointers. So I'd run this through several times on both sides and had no issue. I actually took the dust cover off the back just to see if there was any collected in there. 
and there was none. So that's actually quite promising for this planer. So you can also face joint on the planer using a planer sled. All this is is a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I have a cleat screwed to the back of it. And basically what you do is I run the cleat side first because the wheels are pulling toward that cleat. Your board just has to be thicker than the cleat. So if you have a board that's twisted, in other words, like this, you can set it on your planer sled. You can shim up the gap. In other words, push down on one corner to hold it flat. On the other corner, you're gonna see that gap and then you can start shimming that up with small shims and then start running that through the planer. What that's going to do is flatten the top side. Then you can take it off the sled, turn it over and run it through the planer and you've got two parallel sides. Super easy. Being able to face joint those boards using a planer sled is one of the reasons I recommend getting a planer before the jointer if you have a table saw because you can actually joint on the table saw using the methods I've detailed before in a video which I'll link in the description. One thing that I would absolutely encourage you to do is put up some type of dust collection, whether that be a dust collector or a shop back or a dust separator, something like that, if you're using it inside, because just like any planer, it's gonna throw out a bunch of dust and chips or take it outside to plane your boards. If you're a beginner on a budget, I would highly recommend picking up this planer. I like it, it performed better than I thought, especially if you're wanting to get all your boards the same thickness, cut down on sanding or mill rough lumber so you can save some money when you're buying lumber. Now, if you have the budget, I would recommend the DW735X because I've had this thing for almost five years now. And it's given me zero trouble. It has been a workhorse. It's a really good planer. It's going to last you a very long time. If you are on a budget, this is a great option. What's great about this planer is it takes up very little space. These, these wings fold up to be out of your way. It's just a very compact design, fits perfectly on my new planer cart. As you see here, it's just a good all around machine for $300 to $400, depending on what sale you catch it on. This is an excellent machine. What budget beginner power tool would you like to see me review next? I've done the table saw, I've done the planer, now what? Leave a comment below and let me know. And the reason I'm able to purchase things like this and do reviews on them without depending on sponsorships or asking tool companies for the tools is because your support. If you use the links in the description to buy from our affiliate partners, we get a small commission, but it costs you nothing extra. It's just a great way to support the channel so I can continue to do this without sponsorships. Also, because of our Patreon members and channel members here, we're able to purchase things like this due to their direct support. And they get access to exclusive behind the scenes content member only live streams and other cool perks. So if you'd be interested in joining one of those, I'll leave a link in the description below to those. If you like this video, you'll love the best beginner table saw I've found to date. Click that box right there. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also, this fits perfectly on my new planer cart right there. Click that box, go watch that.